So it's been a while since I've reviewed a keyboard. Luckily, Echo sent over some stuff for me to check out, and one of the things is the Echo 5075S. That's this right here. This review isn't sponsored, and this is my honest opinion of the board. This board is a 75% partially DIY kit. What I mean by that is that it comes mostly assembled already with you needing only switches and keycaps to get typing. It comes with a knob, polycarbonate plate, backlit and side RGBs if you're into that, you can always turn it off, Echo TPU double shot plate mount stabilizers, hot swap sockets, pour on plate foam, pour on case foam, a switch puller, a USB-C cable, and a user manual. And this is all for the price of $59.99 pre-tax and shipping. Let me start by talking about the things that I do like about the board. You basically have most of what you need to make a working keyboard for a reasonable price. The functionality of the keyboard is also pretty great. It's light, compact, and seems to naturally sound more muted. The gasket mounting with the polycarbonate plate gives it a comfortable, soft typing experience so you can use it for quite a while before needing to take a break or before feeling fatigued. It allows for a good amount of customization for people new to keyboards with RGB settings, hot swap, and Echo's cloud driver for remaps and macros. It also just looks nice, even though it's made of some kind of plastic. They don't really specify on the website. Now, it sounds pretty good, right? Well, some of these things are double-edged swords. Although the kit comes mostly assembled, I was unable to find a way to easily disassemble it for additional modding and tuning for fear of breaking something, trying to pry it open. It comes with a lot, but the foam doesn't really seem to do much in getting rid of resonance. It still sounds like a plastic keyboard. I mean, it's definitely possible that it sounds much worse without the foam, but Still, it would be nice if it had more of an effect. The lightweight also plays a part in its sound. Uh, it definitely adds to the plasticky noise. Lastly, the customizability is great, but having to use Akko's own software is kind of a drag when so many other keyboards use Via now. That said, it's kind of hard to fault the keyboard for these issues because it's $60. The Portico has none of the issues I mentioned, but it costs twice as much as the 5075S. Does that mean that the 5075S is great? No, but it does mean that it has its place in the community. As someone who's an enthusiast, I probably wouldn't recommend this to someone who is interested in going further into the hobby as it's a pretty self-contained board. It uses Akko's own software, it's not easy to mod, it doesn't push the user to learn more about the board and how it's constructed. So who exactly would I recommend this to? Basically someone who may be starting off and is on a tight budget. It allows enough for you to learn about keyboards while also being affordable. Not everyone can or wants to just buy a $500 keyboard and that's a completely reasonable expectation. It's also a very clean looking board. I'm sure you made the connection earlier as well when I was talking about it, but I would actually recommend this as a work board. The lightweight makes it easy to bring to and from work. It also makes it easy to rearrange on your desk and place in different angles for ergonomics if you need to. The plastic body means that it can get banged up on stuff and not get jacked up or scratched and if it does it doesn't matter so much because it's just plastic. I also forgot to mention earlier but it has a Windows and a Mac toggle. If needed to you can switch back between OS styles I guess. <laughs> This is especially helpful if you have different devices between work and home that use two different OS's. And the amount of effort they put into making the board sound thocky, it's that's a subjective thing, but it pays off not in the way I think they were planning. It pays off because it gives it more of a subdued sound. It's not completely quiet, but it's not sharp. I'll for sure be bringing this to work when I go back to office as it gives me that custom feel that for sure beats a membrane keyboard and I don't have to worry about the board as much. Even now I find myself using it for its convenience and comfort. I do think it's worth considering if you're looking for a board and have either of these situations or if you just genuinely like the way it sounds, feels, and looks. I mean there's nothing wrong with that. 
I build the board with stock echo palm switches and echo keycaps, so here's the sound test for that. And please take this with a grain of salt, as there are a lot of factors for how a keyboard sounds. So the sound test was almost completely stock. The switches have not been lubed, uh, and I haven't added anything to the keyboard other than lubing the stabilizers with a little bit of stabilizer grease that I inject. And it still sounds pretty good. I will be doing a build soon where I do lube the switches and of course just do a review of those in general, but as is, it performs pretty well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my review of the 5075S. I know I've slowed down posting videos, but I'm trying to ramp back up and provide you with more quality content. Thank you, Echo, for giving me this opportunity to check out this board, and thank you all so much for supporting me in my journey over the past year. It's actually unbelievable how far I've come, and although I'm still a small creator, the support I've received is pretty unreal. So, cheers to you guys. I hope you have a great day, and stay squared.